meeting to order um, they get a uh, mr. Howell to do the invocation followed by uh, Ms. Uh, Dobson to do the pledge dear Heavenly Father we're so thankful to be here together tonight thank you for all the provisions that you give us Lord we, uh, just to ask you to be with us tonight be with our, our community be with our our board members, be with our administration, Lord, be with our children, uh, be with our country. Just help us uh, be the light that you would want us to be in this time of unrest in our country, in this pandemic, Lord. Just help us to make wise decisions tonight and the best decisions uh, on our school district, Lord. We just want to pray this in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Jackson County School District Board Meeting. And uh, we'll enter into uh, um, business, our business session. And uh, with that said, do we have a motion for consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we add items B2, B4, B6 through 8, 10, 11, items C2, items F1 through 6, items I1 through 7, items J3, 5, 8 through 22, 24 through 26, items K, and items O through U. All right. We heard the consent in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Say by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Five and a. All right. Um, I have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Say by Mr. Dickerson. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to add as item J30 the licenses for Mr. Blackman and Ms. Browning and Mr. Nelson. And I would also request that we add Ms. Dent. As agenda item M. Concluder in it. Okay. And that's in the form of a motion. All right. Here a form of motion for an agenda to change to agenda. Do I have a all in favor? I was only a second on that first. Second, second to the change. Well it was Mr. Howell. Now I'll vote all in favor. Five and no. All right. So now we're going back to the agenda. Um, we had a Motion, we had a second. All in favor? Oh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I have, I'd like to request also to amend item 7J7, which is our handbook approval, to approve with the edits to the policy references as noted by email dated earlier this morning on June 15th. Okay, so we have that in the form of a motion for second. item 7J7. Second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Five and up. All right. So now go back. 
Mr. Chairman, I'd like to also um, add to amend item 7B9 to discuss rather than approve the request to enter into agreement for HVAC services. So uh, item 7B9 change from um, approve to discuss. Do I have a yes. second? Second. Second by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Five and up. All right. It's so now going back to the agenda. We had a motion. We had a second. All in favor? Good job. Five and up. <laughs> Anybody right there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have to say it right now. It was nice navigation through. All right. Anything? All right. So, um, next item six: approved minutes of May 11th meeting. We have a motion. Motion. A motion by Ms. Dobson. Second. Second by Mr. Howell. Um, Jack, we okay? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Whoa. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, everything looks good on those minutes. Right. We're all there. So that's a definitive yes. <laughs> it was the I guess. I'm being transmitted. All in favor? Five and up. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> this, is, this is being streamed. <laughs> So with that said, uh, we'll bring it over to Dr. Stricker for uh, superintendent update. Okay, thank you. And, and again, since it is being streamed, I, you know, for people that are watching maybe for the first time, and I think it's great people are uh, dialing in and uh, watching our board meetings. Uh, we are transparent in what we're doing is best for kids, and, and I'm glad people are taking part of that. Uh, that's what board meeting is for. Uh, th this is our compass, so if you could go to the next slide, please. For those who are watching for the first time, uh, this is our compass. This, these are the, uh, uh, I believe athletics are so competitive because you have a scoreboard. At the end of the day, you, you won or lost and you can, you can measure uh, how you did. In education, a lot of times we don't have a scoreboard. This is the scoreboard. These are the goal areas of the Board of Education, which do align with what I've used for the past 16 years myself. Very close. Uh, they're very common. So first of all, uh, increased student achievement, goal number one. I'm going to be making some statements, but these statements really are for discussion if necessary to make sure we are on the same page. It is vital. Uh, it's always, it's always uh, optimal if we're on the same page, but it's vital as we go into uh, uh, school this next school year that we're on the same page. Uh, goal point number one, we are back to work. The governor had an executive order 1495. Uh, which basically he has ordered that schools resume normal business operations no later than July 1, uh, 2020. We do have an action item which will clarify that, but we basically went back to school uh, from our weekly administrative meetings, and, and Mr. Frisbee, you may have even been in that meeting, uh, observing the meeting, uh, really over a month ago. We, we basically came back to work. I didn't find out until uh, um, Jim Keith, our, one of our attorneys, informed us that we had to make that official. So we, we really have been back to work, uh, but we do have an action item that we will make that official. Uh, the next one is, again, while I'm, while I'm making it as a statement, uh, it's vital we're on the same page. And, and uh, you know, I do send you the press releases uh, because that is big when it's on WLOX. There's no doubt it's a, it's a big deal. It gets out there to I don't know how many thousand people. Uh, I get a lot of calls. I get a lot of correspondence. We are coming back to school as normal, quote unquote, as normal as possible. And, and you know, what does that mean? Certainly there's no question that the, and we've said it from day one when COVID-19 hit back late winter, early spring, that this, the safety and well-being of our staff and students is priority number one. Those are not just fancy words, those have been our actions from the time even when, and we discussed it for a while, whether we take grades or not. We've made it a priority. Our actions did back that the safety was priority number one. That has not changed. Um, in moving forward, it's the same philosophy. And so I'm going to read some bullet items that are up there. And again, when I get through those, if there, there needs to be discuss, discussion, let's have a discussion. Uh, but our philosophy is the same. When COVID-19 hit, who did we put at the center of our direction? We put the classroom teacher. We had a philosophy that we felt who knows students better than the classroom teacher? 
and, and so our whole summer online learning was based upon that, our spring into summer was based upon the classroom teachers, the primary contact. Next would be building level administration, then district level administration. The philosophy is still the same. So with the classroom teacher as the center communication uh, with the students and with the parents, we are proposing an RN, an extra RN, our nurse, for each attendance center. This would be CARES funding. And again, the classroom teacher would be the one to identify if there were any health concerns, we would just have an extra resource for that classroom teacher. And then I'm going to skip down to the third bullet point is classroom thermometers. Whether, whether, and we're leaving this up to the attendance centers, whether they do it when the kids get off the bus or when they come into school, that teacher is the one that will monitor the students. And, and if they need the resource of the RN, then they can contact the RN. But the teachers are the, the, the primary contact. On the curriculum uh, front, for academic recovery, and, and Penny's going to talk about that this here in a second, maybe expand upon it. We are looking at an additional $70,000 per school with $30 per student additional funding based upon enrollment. That is for academic recovery from what we could have lost during this time period where kids have not been in the classroom. And Penny may expand upon that. Extra cleaning supplies as necessary. Again, we're not going to just clean for the purpose of perception. This is my opinion. I just feel a lot of what I'm seeing is for perception. We're going to clean when the cleaning is necessary. If we've identified, per the direction of the teacher, the principal, and the RN, people that know that hey, here's a situation. We need some extra cleaning. So, so I want to make sure we're on the same page. That it's not going to be a perception uh, reason that we're cleaning. It's going to be targeted and very specific of why we have some extra cleaning when necessary. Regarding school buses, buses are going to pick up students. Uh, we had a thorough discussion on that, and right now. We feel that it's tight the way it is to pick up, and I should know this coming in this presentation, we bus, what, maybe 6,000 over 9,000 students? Um, you know, I, I, I will find that out. That sounds like a right number. I believe it's, I really believe it's around 6,000 students. We, it is already tight to get these students to class on time, uh, to school on time. It would be very tight if we were to do anything additional out there with one bus driver, even with an aide. With a, with a bus load of 30 to 50, 60 kids. And so we're going to bus as normal. We may have extra hygiene supplies on the bus. We're working out those details, uh, but we got to get the kids to school. Again, the teacher being the primary contact. And, and with all that said, when we say in the best interest of students, of course, safety in, in, in is our concern, safety and well being. But we are also considering how the students feel. And that is, we are trying to create a normal environment for those students so they can move forward in an optimal learning environment. And so safety is a big part of that, but I want to communicate to the board and to the community listening, we need to get these kids back to normal. We need to get the football flying in the air this fall, we need the cross country team out there running, and we need our kids back in school. We need to serve lunches, and we need, we need to uh, bus, the, bus the students as normal as possible. Also, during midst these uncertain times, it's, un it's uncharted territory. I want the Board of Education to know, and please, in discussion here, let me know if these key words are not correct. I believe at this time we need to be very fundamental. We need to focus on the essential and necessary programs. With that said, I'm proposing that there's no new unmandated initiatives. I think we have enough with, with with the COVID-19 of just getting the kids back to school in as normal as environment as possible. That's enough focus right there. We are going to continue with the bond project because we need to get our facilities updated and we need to consider future enrollment trends. I feel we're already a little bit behind on that. And we've already started the ACT initiative. But, but I, from my direction, I really believe that we need to, no matter how good a new initiative is, for example, we need to relook at how we're doing security maybe. And so I do meet with the sheriff on a, I have lunch with the sheriff on a monthly basis. And, and I even told the sheriff, I said, yeah, let's take a look at that, but not now. Right now we have enough going on, I feel, and we need to focus in. And of course, the last bullet point there is we are still going to also always consider the well-being of our students. Dr. Stricker, yes, sir. I just want to say thank you for this initiative. Because you don't get this every year. Right. 
you don't get this a lot of places. And and I just want to say thank you. I think uh, I think all the board members agree with that. We have all received so many great comments about graduation, about your drive to make sure that every senior in the school district had a legitimate graduation that was as normal as possible, as normal as possible. I think it was a huge success. I appreciate your drive to get students and teachers back in the classroom this fall on a regular basis. As safe and so as possible. I just want to say thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that because I know that you put a lot of energy into it and a lot of thought. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Penny. Okay, and uh, do you have any questions, specific questions regarding um, our spending of the CARES money for um, eliminating or at least reducing the loss of academic progress during COVID-19? What, what was the what was the rules with that money? The red tape what, what, in a high level. What like basically? What can you spend on what you, what you cannot spend? Uh, there on? was there was a list, and uh, we could spend it on uh, a very various things that were related to COVID nineteen. And when we got together as a team, we decided that we really felt like we needed to focus on that academic recovery. So uh, we know that our students are going to have uh, some skill. Um, gaps that are um, potentially as a result of the COVID-19 closure. So what we would, what we like to do, what we would like to do, and our focus is, um, based on our team decision, is to focus that CARES Act money on tutoring and extra support for uh, teachers and students um, to to make that happen. So um, we are spending a good amount of money towards that. And of course, just to, to let you know our process, and we, we are not finished with our uh, plans. We've got preliminary plans in place, and I'll be bringing something forward in uh, July related to the, uh, the State Board of Education, uh, their current uh, thing that they came out with last Thursday, which they revised and um, provided some more waivers for the 2020-21 school year. So we will be bringing forward some revisions and some recommendations next next uh, school board meeting. But we will, of course, um, we'll, we'll offer a diagnostic assessment to all of our students to determine where, where the skill gaps are, and then we will make academic decisions and instructional decisions based on that. So the, when you refer to the money, are you referring to the $70,000 per school? Yes. I have, one. I have a question about the classroom thermometers. Um, is that a, a recommendation or a must to do? And then my other question would be is uh, when we choose to do that, where would we be taking the temperature and how would we get those kids back home? And, and, and the answer is we are working our team. And by the way, Board of Education members, let me know we can't have more than been free, but let me know if you'd like to attend one of our staffings to see how we're, we're working through this. And so um, we're making a lot of determinations with a team of about 30 people. And there's a nurse, one of the nurses that will be represented every meeting. So we, we are working through those details. Uh, and that brings me to the next point that, that Penny's putting together, and that's a Q&A. We're going to take all this information, because uh, the way the state sends out information, how can I say this? Because we are being streamed. Uh, sometimes it's very technical. And we're going to take that and make it into a very comprehensive Q&A, what parents need to know. That will certainly be one of the questions. So we, we are working through those details, and we will have a Q&A. Really, we needed this board direction first, because I can, we, we had to move through this together as a leadership team. Uh, and so after this evening, we're going to be putting together a Q&A, and that will be one of the questions, I'm assuming. Penny, you yes. have anything? That would be uh, part of the uh, proposal I'll bring forward uh, next school meeting. But do you know at this point if it is, uh, is it a requirement to take their temperature, or is it No, what this we've is received a... so far are um, recommendations okay. uh, from a task force that was put together by um, Dr. Carrie Wright, and it's a document, and there are no mandates, but just recommendations and uh, so what we have to do then is take those recommendations decide where it fits into what's best what we feel is best for students and then um, make that recommendation to you and then with your approval we will move forward 
Thanks, Ben. So it's not a voting item, but I will assume from and I appreciate the comments that, that we're on the same page. Uh, and I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but this is critical because I uh, unfortunately it's become political and it's 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 unfortunate that it is, but because it has become political. I need to make sure what we're planning and what I'm saying on the news and what I'm sending out is consistent. So uh, we're coming back to school with these safety precautions, not only precautions, but processes in place. I, I want to add something <clears throat> to that. Just, just I found it interesting. I appreciate you inviting me to the administrators, your administrator staff meeting. Some of the rest of the board may, not, may or may not have heard. Um, you know, I agree with some of the comments that were made in that meeting where they talked about people want normalcy and they're ready to they're ready to come back you know and, and yeah, I think they appreciate what you're doing as far as trying to keep it as normal as possible and safe but one of the I think it was an interesting statistic I think mr. Knight mentioned it and I think uh, maybe uh, miss Tanner mentioned it was when y'all talk about how many kids showed up for football for practice record amounts I think it was 128 of these well, central. Maybe not records, but it was higher than usual. I'm sorry. They include it was in the 70s. I mean, you had a lot of kids showing up for practice, wanting that normalcy back. Right. And Graduation uh, ceremonies too. Yep. So, uh, so I echo what Mr. Dickerson was saying. I appreciate everybody doing that for the kids. I think that's extremely important. Okay. Moving on. Uh, positive educational experience. Um, the goal is the same through the COVID-19, and that is um, even ahead of academic gain, uh, we want to make sure we consider the well-being of the students. Another way to put it uh, for presentation's sake is we understand that our staff and students are human beings. And if you don't have the well-being of a human being considered, and we are no different, if, if people aren't considering our health, safety, and well-being first, the higher the needs academic achievement is not that important, as important as it is to us. And so that's another way to work uh, our approach with positive educational experience. Uh, sound financial management, oh, and one other item. Ryan, going back to academic achievement before we leave it, can you go back one slide, please? Um, in the um, agenda, do we have to establish a date, or Laura, you may be the, uh, as far as when we're back, or, do we have to have a date established? Yes. So yes. What, what date are we saying for that? So June 1st was being brought back. So there is an action item in the agenda. I'm not going to take time to look it up right now. But we will put June 1st in there for being back, to, to back in operation. OK, go ahead and skip to um, sound financial management. It wasn't a rocket science, if I may say that when COVID-19 hit, and my wife and I on Sunday mornings go for a walk, go, we go for walks and sometimes we'll walk the bridge and walk into Bluffs. And when we went from when we first moved here, seeing hundreds and thousands of cars and people to no one, that there was gonna be a financial crunch coming our way at the state, local, and federal level. And so we have been preparing and reporting on this, and we've been preparing ourselves uh, for how we're gonna meet this challenge. The direction from the Board of Education has been to use fund equity as necessary, and that's what fund equity is for. And again, since I admit, I know we're being streamed now, I want our community to know that our fund equity target is 12%, and I believe Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but the state standard used to be seven, maybe not anymore. So we are almost double the state standard of fund equity, and for people watching, that's money in the bank, that's your balance. So it's a very conservative number. Above and beyond that, we're at around, four, well, we are. So the update for this month is we're 14.7. We are projecting right now we may hit as high as 15 or 16 percent, which will be well above an already conservative number. So I want our taxpayers to know we're very conservative. However, going into next year, and this is per the direction of the board, and I want our taxpayers to know it's still very conservative. We're going to use some of that fund equity because that's what fund equity is for. I do agree with the Board of Education. Nonetheless, though, we do have a plan in place. We've already begun working on how we're going to maintain, to the best of our ability, the 12% fund equity, knowing that we may go down to 11%. Uh, so we do have a plan in place. So Ryan's going to present on that. Uh, but you can see our current number is 14.7. For people watching this, 
uh, uh, 1% is about $750,000. And again, for people watching, that means reserve. It's money in the bank, like your home checking account. It would be your balance. And so with that said, Ryan's going to present some numbers. And I just want to, like, like the um, academic slide, I want to make sure we're still on the same page. We don't have to vote, just general consensus. Um, to give you an update just on the revenue side, um, I don't have much changes from last month. Um, to me, that is good news. Um, it's good news that probably what you saw last month and what you're seeing this month is probably worst case scenario in terms of revenue projections. Um, as Dr. Stricker mentioned, uh, we're probably in about 15.5 to 16% fund balance to end this current fiscal year. And um, the, the budget preview that is on the agenda this evening is projecting an 11% ending fund balance June 2021. Um, as Dr. Stricker mentioned, that there are some things that we are doing um, to try to address this to alleviate some of the operational pressure. Um, one thing that we've uh, banter back and forth is the school bus purchases, funding those out of the three mil proceeds that we received back in August. That was $8.2 million. Um, where that ties into the slide here is where, it's, where you see debt proceeds, three mil, the three million and 19,000. We would uh, use some of those proceeds to fund our buses this year and possibly next year because we don't know what next year's revenues are going to look like. Um, that would still leave us with a, a, a good chunk of change to address some facility needs uh, as it relates to repairs that may arise. Uh, with respect to the 16th section interest fund, um, Dr. Strick and I, as well as uh, some members of the leadership team, have spoken about using that to help shore up any operational deficiencies for FY21 and possibly FY22 and beyond. Uh, right now, as you see, we've got $2 million there. It is not earmarked for anything. I've always presented it as an item that you guys can tap into for construction needs. Uh, but we may have to change that philosophy if our uh, desire and drive is to return as normal as possible and, and not put our, our students and teachers at a disadvantage in terms of spending and resources. Uh, but that is, again, at, at, at your guys' direction. Um, I think there's anything else I want to touch upon. Um, well, this, this ties into the bond project, facility project. Um, you know, certainly if we can address, based on a facility study, I always want to say that, based on as much as we can data, address our facility needs, certainly that can, can depending on how we approach it, and the board will decide, that can relieve the general fund as well, considerably. And so, um, that's something else I'd like to add, uh, that, that the community may not know that's listening. Mm -hmm. so. and, and one more point. Um, there, there, I spoke with Jim Young last week, late last week. Uh, there is a statute on the books, and this is just, I'm just throwing this out there as an FYI. Um, I haven't dug too much further into it. We can possibly go above levying 55 operating mills uh, during a state of emergency. And we can go as high as what we were the past 10 fiscal years, which is something to consider. I just found that out late last week. So if that's something you're interested in, let Dr. Stricker know, and, and Jim and I can work together on that. It is a, a, a unknown statute. Okay. So with that said, again, my, my report based on, you know, anybody, state or federal standards, uh, by most school industry standards, uh, our fund equity is healthy and would continue to be even using some of it during this time period. Any comments to make sure we're on the same page as we, as we move forward? I think it's still conservative. I know it's still conservative, even though we're using some fund equity. No one would argue, no logical person would argue that COVID-19 is a rainy day. It is a totally unexpected, unpredicted event that causes financial challenges. I don't think anyone would argue that that is the term rainy day. So. Right. I, I concur with the use of fund balance mm -hmm. during this during this period of time. I think that's sound. Uh, I think uh, I think the district has worked to create a good, healthy fund balance, and I think now is the appropriate time to draw on some of that. Um, um, we'll have to ponder some of these other ideas. Okay. But but at least we have them. We're, we're prepared. So. Any other comments? 
I, I agree. I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. That's why we keep a rainy day fund. Right. You never know what's going to happen. You know, uh, um, no one can ever see that there's right. going to be a no, pandemic. No one can argue. But that's that's what, that's same way with a hurricane. Even though you know yeah. a hurricane is likely to right. happen, right. you never expect the big one. Right. Same thing here. You never expected this, and that's why we keep it fun balance. Right. So I think good job. And I think it's good suggestions. And uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to be talking about this more as we go on. Okay. Moving on to uh, safety incidences. Um, I don't think anyone up would argue that. However, we understand we haven't been in school, even though we have staff working. Uh, that a 98 uh, percent is, is, is would be considered an, an ACE. In a grade, so uh, I'm pleased with that. Improved facilities and infrastructure. And tonight we're going to be discussing moving forward uh, with selecting an architectural firm to work with as we move forward. Uh, which the first step in that would be a facility plan, a needs assessment that our that our whole plan is going to be based off. Uh, you can see under general procedure for issuing school bonds, it's been presented, and I will continue to present that. Uh, anyone listening uh, to the stream that is interested from our community, it, interested in serving on our committee vision team, um, uh, please contact my office. Uh, we're putting that together. I'm certainly working through the school administrator, same with Board of Education. And, and what we're looking for is certainly those people that want to take part, but we're also looking for those quiet leaders. We, we need those people. It could be the, it could be the lady of the elderly lady that sits in back of the church and never says a word, but when she says a word, people listen. So we're looking for those quiet leaders in our community to be a part of this team, and not just to be a part to market it, but for input. So we are starting to put that team together. So you can see uh, August, we're looking at holding a meeting in August. Uh, so we're starting that process of putting that team together. Uh, but we're going to begin the needs assessment. I believe uh, after this evening, uh, upon determining an architect, and, and again, we're going to. I'm excited about uh, moving forward with the selection of an architect tonight as we move forward. Uh, it's not set in stone, but we are still. The consensus is a spring 2021 election, and I want our community to understand the reason for that is again, I feel from the data that I've seen, but we're going to have a very thorough, thorough facility study done. But I feel we're already a little bit behind as we discuss some numbers that we saw. Uh, with student student data um, and growth in our community, remember this process takes time, it takes years, and so I feel we're already behind. So I want our community to know that it's not that we're trying to make a big splash. We are just we, we need to move forward with adequate and safe facilities meeting our enrollment needs. Is why we're looking at a possible, subject to change, possible spring 2021 election. And then the last slide, uh, effective leadership. I bring the book with me all the time. Uh, by the way, anybody in our community that uh, I've, I'll personally, uh, my own money, buy anyone in our community that wants a copy of this book that I will reference so often. It's it, because it's a playbook, and I will personally buy anyone a copy that would want one. Uh, but it's a playbook for me because it's based off data that it's hard to argue. A 10 year study of the top 100 companies in the world based on profit. And all those companies. One of the first steps, well, the first step is leadership means everything, and it's first who, then what. And then once you have the right people putting them in the right places, the top 100 companies in the world, no one can argue that. Study 10 years. With that said, I'm very excited about two recommendations tonight for assistant superintendent positions for Van Cleve and St. Martin. And I want our community to know that it was a, uh, we, we had a committee that was very a very thorough and qualified committee of community members, parents, a parent, at least one parent, uh, staff members uh, at the secondary and elementary level, administration and, and uh, athletics was represented. And so a uh, very thorough committee. And however, though, I don't put it on the committee, I take ownership of the recommendation, uh, but there was a lot of background checking and, and I'm excited about our first two them one that's gonna be presented this evening. So effective leadership is a goal of ours and our, our actions will show that it is something, not just words, but it's actions. So with that said, that's my take. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. So that brings us to uh, item B3, open and award hunting and fishing bids.
right, Ryan. This is uh, 16.58 and 16.48. Uh, we'll do 16.48 first. It appears as though we have the one, the one bid. There's one on that and, and there are the existing lessees. Uh, 16.48 has a minimum bid of $7 per acre. They uh, are spending their bid of $7 per acre for the 621.11 acres for a total price of $4,000. $347.77. This is from Rondell Young for Jones Wilson Hunting Walker Lodge Inc. Is that the current leaseholder for It is. Again, that was uh, seven dollars per acre, six hundred twenty-one point one one acres. Total price four thousand three hundred forty-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Uh, the other bid that we are opening this evening is for sixteen five eight. That one has a minimum bid of five dollars and ten cents per acre. And we received one bid. This bid comes in at $5.10 per acre for 642.4 acres. Total price $3,276.24. Again, $3,276.24 at the minimum $5.10 per acre. This is from uh, JW Webb. Those are both our current lessees, and that's the minimum base is what they paid last five years ago. So it's there's no change in rent. So we recommend those two. Yes. All right. So we have a motion to approve um, proposal one and proposal two for the bid tabulation, and to uh, this will be Rondell Young, current lessee, for seven dollars per acre, and J W Webb. Motion. Um, motion to approve. Jones Wilson Hunting, seven dollars an acre, section sixteen four eight, and JW Webb at five dollars and ten cents an acre for section sixteen five eight. Okay. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. All in favor? Five and up. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's five up. Five. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. Yep. All right. So that takes us to seven B five. Approve agreement with Jack Pickett, attorney at law. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. Any discussion? All, right. All in favor? Five and up. All right. That takes us down to item. B9, which we changed on the, the agenda, is discuss request to enter into agreement with Star Service Incorporated to provide HVAC. All right. So I guess I'm looking at looking at Ryan. Looking yeah, at Dr. Stryker. Ryan headed that off. I'm mm -hmm. certainly chime in as necessary. Yeah. Right. So uh, do you want to talk about the process, selection process? Uh, yeah. Is there anything particular? A okay. A concern about it and, and chime in board. It, is one of the concerns we had I know in April in April was on the agenda to put out an RFQ and to give authority to approve normally I guess our policy has where we do the we collect the bids and do the tabulations so it seems like we have like a little bit of a conflict right here so so, yeah. so this is an RFP so it's not a sealed bid 
um, like let's say the waste management services where you have set parameters of what your expectations for the scope of work are. So um, the, the waste management is on the agenda this evening and that one is okay, um, company XYZ, we want you to come to East Central Lower two times a week serving eight yard bins and give us your best price across the district and here's all our other schools. This was, was much different. Um, basically, we went out to these HVAC companies and said, um, we are looking for a preventative maintenance plan and we're looking for some service call coverage. You provide us what you're proposing as our PM plan for all of our units district-wide. Um, we felt um, as leaders, assistant superintendents, that we needed to step up our maintenance program as it relates to the HVAC units we have out there. We felt like we are uh, spending a lot of resources chasing fires and, and units that have really failed us. And um, our maintenance guys at each of the three attendance centers who, who lead those departments and, and provide the HVAC intermediary between the district and, and our HVAC company have said the same. I said, guys, we don't believe these units are being serviced like they need to be serviced. The problem with, with us taking ownership of that and then turning it into like a sealed bid process like we did with waste management is we don't know what our scope of work should look like. We don't know the frequency. We don't know what we should be doing with each one of these units. So we turned to these HVAC companies and leaned on them with their expertise. Provide us what your PM program is by unit type. So we received these submissions, large binders. Uh, we went through them. We had the HVAC guys, uh, I'm sorry, the maintenance guys on the committee. We had the assistant superintendents on the committee. Uh, Dave was on the committee to provide some control support with, with what we had going on at St. Martin. And it was really just, we needed to figure out what kind of PM plan we needed and we relied on them and their submissions. And, and we, we talked it over, uh, we considered price, certainly, um, and, and we engaged the company that the committee felt was best positioned to provide the most comprehensive program we could afford. And that's what it came down to. So it was, it's, it's a little bit different than a sealed bid where you're just saying, give us your best price. This is a little bit different. When you have an RFP, it's more than just price. You have parameters that you use, and we use five of them to score them and we interviewed the top three. So that's our methodology and kind of what our thought process was going through the whole thing. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I, and I understand that we went into it where we didn't know what we wanted. And I get, I get that. And, and the board has struggled for many years with really having a facilities manager who works for the district and they understand, they get it, they understand air conditioning plants, they understand plumbing, they understand roofing systems, they read blueprints, they manage projects, I understand that. We just don't have that person. We don't have that person on staff. I believe we need that person. We don't have them on staff. I get that. Um, so I understand why you did what you did. You didn't know what you wanted to buy until you went out there and talked to folks. But at least myself, I think we missed that next step where you sit down and you talk to all of these folks and then you figured out what you did want to buy. And we didn't put it down in a document and then put it out to all these companies to give them a shot at providing that service for some dollar value. And then let's, let's look at all of their proposals Let's follow our policies, let's open them in here, let's evaluate once we did know what we were actually wanting to So that's a more consistent approach with, I think, the way we do everything else and the way we buy everything else. Um, yeah. That's, that's, my, that's my concern. And just with my experience, uh, going back to uh, 2002 when I was over operations in Bay City Public Schools, uh, about 10,000 student district, very similar in size to what? But we are here. Uh, at that time, we went out and we, we were looking at a large-scale uh, energy management contract. And so this, this brings me back to that experience even once I've been 18, 15, 20 years ago, where there was just, to apples to apples that, uh, you know, I think at the time it was a Johnson Control Train, I can't remember, uh, Honeywell, there were some major players coming in and there was just we, we tried that even back in 2002 to apples to apples and it just wasn't because the approach 
the approaches are so much different. They vary so much, and it was similar here. Moving forward, I would ask for your support and approval. Once we get a grip on what we're doing, whether we bring a facilities person on when the bond, if and when the bond passes, we can talk about that later. Moving forward, we can do we can try to apples to apples this, but for now, you know, we needed to move forward. Um, we felt with with uh, selecting the vendor and learning with them, um, and so. But it was a very thorough committee that looked at it, so it's nothing that's it's not anything we're trying to pull a quick one or anything like that. I don't disagree with the choice. I don't even disagree with the process. Right. I just feel like we missed a step, and here I sit on a Monday night in June, and I'm asking, I'm being asked to buy something, and I don't know what I'm buying. And, and that's where I, to be blunt, I, guess okay. I would ask that you trust us that we, yeah. that we do care and are very yeah. thorough. And I will say this: I've been here six months, uh, and one of the I get and I've that. shared a lot of it, but one of the top concerns I've had has been HVAC. It's been HVAC. I mean, more than I share with you as a partner. Oh, I, I, believe so, me, I, yeah. you know, Ms. Tanner, we had awful, it was an awful lesson. So, Started school last year. Right. So I'm not, I'm not saying right. that it's not a concern. Um, but I think it puts the board in a bad position where we're being asked to buy something and we don't really know what we're buying. And so I'll just say that. And let me add just a couple of notes here. Uh, last week we had a board meeting in here. The AC was not working. I know that they've had volleyball tryouts and there's no AC in the gym. And so yeah, no, HVAC is a huge issue. And obviously we've got mine and we need, we need to move forward sooner rather than later. But, you know, I can appreciate completely Glenn's concern and wanting to understand because we're just very concerned board about when it comes to especially huge expenses. I but, appreciate that. But for this, it the note that we have here says July 6, 2020 through August 5, 2020. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, the summer preventative program. Um, it should be 27 days, Monday through Saturday is, is what they're proposing to have. Eight technicians, eight hours a day, six days a week, rotating throughout our district to get as much PM work done as possible, prioritizing those units that need it most. Um, it, it just comes down to time. You know, we're, we're running out of time. When, when you start something like that in July, uh, really, you're, you're losing half your summer. Uh, we do a lot of things over the summer, whether it's waxing floors, uh, painting buildings. If you remove the month of June, you remove a lot of you know, opportunity there. And so what we talked about is come uh, next summer, is we would um, engage a new contract that would start June 1st and allow that company to do a proper eight-week PM program over the summer where they can address all the units uh, you know, if we've got the, uh, the funding to do that. And so that's what our long-term plan is. Okay. So I think that's part of it. There are just so many questions, and I think it was just due for a real good thorough discussion today maybe. Oh, no but doubt. so the next the next paragraph that we said, to, the next paragraph said the district presently pays 335000 for labor to the service company. So what period of time was that amount of money for? That's a one-year term. That so that is, was over the that, full that was, year? Uh, July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020, and that's labor only. Okay. okay. So that's what we were trying to understand those Labor numbers. only. I want to make sure. But yeah. So, okay. so are we being asked to buy a short-term contract from July to August with I'm um, looking for star service to do PM for an additional $148,000. No. And then we would continue with our year long contract with the service company for $335,000. No, sir, that's not what we're proposing. We're proposing that we allow that contract with the service company to last June 30th okay. and that we utilize our service company from July 6th through the August 5th dates to provide the PM program and, and concurrently they're going to provide the service calls coverage for us. Um, at that time we can reevaluate and see do we like these guys, uh, kind of almost looking at as a probationary period and if we do uh, we can engage them for the remainder of the academic year for our service calls. So. So, so, so I think what would help you Mr. Dickerson is presently the service company, they attack the preventative maintenance work at the same time they, they, they're trying to work in service calls. 
So if, if, like for example, today, my office has a brand new HVAC unit. It's 79 degrees in there today. I had to go to, to you know, the service company, um, to that individual and say, hey, what's going on here? We just replaced this last week. Why are we having issues? Um, he has to stop doing any preventative maintenance work he's doing here on the Van Cleef campuses to go address that issue as well as two other issues that are above, you know, my request. So that means during that time, no PM work's getting done. Well, I'm not and, saying and what we're doing now is good. I'm not <laughs> saying, I'm not arguing that. I'm, not arguing that. I'm trying to understand what I'm buying. It's a, it's a preventative maintenance program. It's, it's um, the proposal, I think maybe that would help if I, you to send that out. It's basically we are buying a certain number of man hours is how you could look at it. Eight individuals, eight hours a day, six days a week, 27 days total. Uh, whatever the, uh, in the letter there, I, I notated what those man hours come out to. That is what we are buying uh, at $85 per hour. So what happens after August 5th? I don't have air conditioning repair. Okay. No, that's, that's, the, that's, that's what he was just saying. There, there's two different things going on here. You have the preventative maintenance. That's one piece of it. You've got the service calls, which are entirely different piece. It could be an entirely different service tech team. So you have this team of eight individuals doing PM work over the summer for that 27 days. And then as service calls arise, they're going to send more techs to our campuses to address all those service needs. It is almost like two different divisions servicing our district at the same time of $85 per hour. Did we do this PM program last summer as well? We did not. This, this, uh, Which is a big piece of making. They're trying to do it simultaneously, but they just don't have the manpower to do it simultaneously. It hasn't been done properly, I'll just say that. Right, Maybe right. That. Well, and that's part of what a preventative preventative maintenance program does, is get you ready to, to, yeah, to deter all those emergent situations. So. You've been around since before we had the service company. You were there the night that we entered into agreement with them over there in your library. So, were we not did we ever take on the role of PM for the district during the service company contract? Didn't we have some kind of a plan where we were going to do PM and change filters and yeah, so but forth? In the original contract with the service company, our maintenance men were responsible for changing out the filters. Yeah. And so we got our maintenance guys did no well, we went away from it when we gave this like six month contract with the service company. You yes. know when we did that? Yeah. In that contract they were to do the filters. But up until that point, our maintenance staff was supposed to change out the filters, which which they have been. Okay. Uh, on, at least mine have, I can't speak for the other ones, but on a consistent basis. Okay. And we had a really good tech with the service company, so I was blessed. Right. We haven't had the HVAC issues that some of the other tensioners have had because my tech was so good. But I think one thing to help you understand is right now we have a guy on site from the service company that stays here eight hours a day, and every time we have a problem, he goes to fix it. What he's saying is if this company will spend the hundred whatever to get to him for the month of July, and then after that there won't be anybody on site. We'll have to call them if we have a problem, the $60 for them to come out, and then $85 an hour to fix it, and then they'll leave, and then we have another problem, we're going to call them back, and they'll come back again. So there won't be anybody on site. So there is no, okay, we're going to pay you $300,000 to have somebody on site to fix air conditioners the rest of the year. It'll be on a call-only basis. Was it your opinion that we had some slow time when we had somebody on site eight hours a day? No, sir, it wasn't. No, my guys stay busy with our air conditioners most of the time. So at this at this um, at this call rate for eight hours a day for similar service, what will that equate to? What will we wind up paying? The break even point? Yeah. So I mean, I don't so know they're going to charge us eighty nine dollars an hour. You won't know because you don't know how many air conditioners are going to break down. They won't know that cost until the end of the year. The theory is if you do the proper PM, yes. you'll reduce your service calls. Is, is kind of what Which we have not, to put it short. And, 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 and our approach has been putting in fires, not prevent, the word preventative maintenance. I will so say this. That's why we're approaching it. This so is, we it, is the final three firms, and, and we told them we have an on-site tech to attendance center, they were in shock. 
They could not believe we had that many problems here in this district that we would require three full-time on-site techs to address repair work. All three. And that's yeah. all three. Then. All three. So, am I, am I, if I'm hearing this right, what was going on in Thane Cleave, you had a you had a tech that was doing the proper PM. And so you had less issues, or you had just as many issues, but it, but he was just there to take care of. It. He had a great tech. Now I guess I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to understand because you said something that kind of concerned me was, was we do the PM program, so like they do a, a a thorough PM program, and then when it's over with, we don't have any techs on site. We have to make that service call. I have to call. Them, hey, we got a problem. And I'm assuming they got a they got a report within a certain amount of time, and come to our come to the site and fix it. So I guess the theory is, is that if we do this PM up front, that's going to have less issues yes. during the time. Pretty mm -hmm. certain. And Van Cleve was a model for that, I guess. Just like at home. Just like at home. When you if you didn't change your furnace filter or not furnace your air conditioning equipment, but yeah. It, it makes a difference or your car or anything else so I would I was since you involved me in this conversation I did I was <laughs> I was not of the same opinion personally and neither was my HVAC guy uh, I, I think putting the maintenance is going to help you're going to have less but you're still going to have a bunch of stuff. I mean it's a, a lot of buildings air a lot of air conditioners a lot of people it's not like your house air conditioner and the preventive maintenance is going to help, but I still, I told, and I told Ron, I said, please call me at the end of the year, and, and I'd like to say I was wrong, because if I am, it'll save the district money. But I, I don't see where it's going to save the district money, and I don't think personally it's going to be as a, a quick a service. But that was my personal opinion, based on my experience with it. But I've never, I've never been under a situation where you have to call to get somebody to come out. I've always had somebody right there that I could see in. And we were trying to do preventive maintenance through the, not in one month or two months, but throughout the year, and it is like you said, it is hard. You got one guy who's doing maintenance, then he gets a call. He's got to leave that and go. So, it, but he's got all year to do that too. He doesn't have just two months, you know, to do the preventive maintenance. But. So, so let's talk for a minute. What wrong? What wrong equals? Okay. So, we're going to pay 148. So our normal cost is this contract with this service company, which is. We put it in here for three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars for labor. So wrong equals one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars plus eighty-nine dollars an hour plus fifteen percent markup for three technicians for eight hours a day. That's two thousand man hours a year per head. That is six hundred and fourteen thousand dollars plus. The hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. But then, then there, we're not so, proposing that they would be working three technicians eight dollars an hour. See, it sounds like each one of those vendors that that bid on this, but each one of those vendors even were, were completely surprised that we had three full-time technicians that still had so many issues. So they're not anticipating full-time hours for three people in this. And I'll say just from experience as well, uh, Miss Power Company has contract uh, statewide service with Star Services. There's no HVAC systems in-house, no HVAC technician in-house other than our own preventative maintenance. And Star Services covered from Escatapa to Gulfport and, and they did very well and it was efficient for them as well. And that's a facility full of maintenance people. So, um, that, that cost also is also is just labor for the service company. So all of the units that we buy that may not go out because of your preventative maintenance plan, those may not have been needed to be purchased. So does the eighty-nine dollars an hour plus fifteen percent markup include parts? No, no. So it's the same. But you're, but it's not a it's not additional. That, well, that was why wash. I asked Mr. Knight if he had any Spare kind time. of dead periods right. in the guy that was working eight hours a day and I think he indicated that he did, really didn't yeah, have we'll have some occasionally but for the most part he's he's pretty busy I mean, the, I mean to me the question would be is uh, you know, how many issues do we have over the district this past year and 
for if we don't renew the contract, we can compare that to moving forward this year to see and have an estimate to say maybe this isn't a good idea. But I just I don't think you'll know that. I mean, these people were on site and they were doing work all year to say, oh, they had 20 preventative maintenance issues at Bankley and we had 30 at St. Martin. And keep a track of that moving forward this year to say, oh, well, we only had half that many as compared to last year when we had people on the ground. Um, we, we do have that data. If that's what you're looking for, service call data. Yeah. Currently, we have that. Data. Yeah. And, and that was our intention is to evaluate what is the, the performance of the star service versus what is the performance of what we had before. So I'm assuming y'all looked at that data when y'all was making the choice for them. I did not. They, they have they have their own each attendance center data. And, and then we're going to have the data from the star service company. Because that's what you're saying. Yeah. I think part of it is that we can appreciate that we, we had a lot of questions and it was open for discussion just like the dates and you know, last year's contract versus this one so it's a little bit of a new process but I am 100% for doing something different because I know HVAC has been a huge issue more than what and, I've and I know so because about two years ago I get a text about once or twice a week we're selling snowballs tomorrow bring a dollar and it was because the HVAC systems were out in the different classrooms across the schools so I was very familiar with a snowball day meant y'all y'all be prepared that it's gonna be hot at school today so I know there are a lot of HVAC systems in the student that shouldn't be, or the, or the teachers or staff or, you know, that shouldn't be subject to those issues. And it's just maintenance cost. It's just labor cost. So whatever we can do to try to get a handle on this. A part of our facility study is going to be the hugest piece of that, but um, the facility assessment, but here with the preventative maintenance program, I can't deny that. You know, I just can't deny it. It's, it's a potential big cost. Well, I think it's a risk that has to be taken because something has to be different. And we're behind in cost, so it probably should cost us more this year to take care of our HVACs. I, you know, if I mean, if three techs were not enough, then maybe four was the right number. How effective were those techs? Were Mr. they? Nine, how effective was your tech? Mine was very effective. That's one. St. Martin one High School three. has two children's down right now possibility of losing a hundred thousand dollar gym floor because of humidity is there. The service company, their tech does not know how to fix the problem. His boss came down. Yes, I'm not arguing that the service company is providing us good service. That was not the intent if that was what you thought. I don't I, I'm you know I know Ms. Tanner and I have had conversations about the service that they provided at East Central High School last year. I'm just saying the way this is structured is potentially an enormous cost to the school district. And it, it, it is a concern of mine. It is a concern of mine. I'm not sure where we would pay that kind of money. What pot of money we have to pay that cost. It's a gamble. I mean, basically, what you're doing is you're paying 140,000 up front to do preventive maintenance. That say, okay, that's going to reduce the amount of units that go down, the amount of parts we have to buy. But the original contract was 335, whatever. So you basically got a 200,000 dollar difference right now. So what you're gambling is we're not going to spend 200,000 dollars for the whole year across the three attendance centers to keep our air conditioners going at 60 dollars just to come, plus 85 dollars or 89 dollars an hour, plus 15 percent markup. If we can do that for less than $200,000, what we have left that we spent last year. Yeah, and after I, you do the preventive maintenance. And to note that as well, I mean, we're, we're all thinking about, oh my goodness, if we make this decision now, we're stuck for a year. But it sounds like we're just talking about a one month preventative maintenance plan. And if we go two, two months or three months and see that our costs are escalating, then we go back into a contract however we need to go into it. So we're not committed to anything beyond this one, this one month preventative maintenance plan. And we can have it on our, we can go ahead and set on our board agenda in two to three months to have another evaluation of what we've spent. Correct. Our, our, our discussion was a 90 day probationary. Yes, yeah, there, there we go, in 90 days. So that, that's not so worrisome that we're so stuck for a year. Can we see these numbers every month? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let's, I've let's seen you guys have these. We, we could benchmark this year and, and then maybe do a 12 month trailing average. Let's look, at these, let's look at these numbers every month as we progress into the fall, beginning at the 
front of the August board meeting. Um, and let's see how many um, hours we're trending in addition to the $148,000 PM. Right. That's fair. Thank you. And I, and I would like to, well, let me just say this. Uh, well, add on what Mr. Drigger said, I'd like to see it compared to the you know how we've done things in the past. Like, you know, Mr. Knight brought up a good point that that two hundred thousand dollar mark is your is your buffer. I kind of want us to benchmark it against last year's or year or historical. That's fair. Historical data. See how we're doing on it. Um, but I guess overall, the concern I have is, and Mr. Dickerson brought up a good point earlier, is I guess this is why when we're developing a plan like this that affects the district, the board needs a little bit more info on it prior to a board meeting. I mean, the only thing we had was in April, just saying, hey, y'all, we're going to go look, y'all, we're going to go look at a, a contract and, 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 and do what's best for it. Or you said you basically um, you want to go look for a service contract and you wanted authority to go approve it, to have approval for that. We probably need to be a little bit more involved as far as uh, updated. yeah, just updated of what's going on. That way, I'll avoided, take ownership. It avoided all this at the end. So and, and so, like Mr. Digger said, let's have monthly updates on how we're doing. And if it looks like it's not working out, let us know what we need to do next year. If we, if we decide to enter this thing into a year next summer as we approach it, like say the April time frame, that's probably when we need to start having the discussions just to keep us in the loop on what's going on so we avoid this confusion when it comes time to a board. And that's busy, that's, that $200,000 was just labor. And that's not the thing. We have Correct. to buy our own parts. We need to compare apples to apples. We need to say the 200000 plus huge. the amount of parts we had to buy in addition to that would be nice as to related that to their, cost was last year. their so service the fees parts. plus the parts that they have to buy. Yeah, understood. Good point, right? understood. Okay. Thank you, Ryan, for your work. You put a lot of time in, David. I'll take ownership of the communication that needed, needed and should have taken place. So. All right. So. So at this point, can I would like to make a motion, move to approve the request to enter into the agreement for this service date through July, July, July 6, twenty twenty, through August fifth, twenty twenty. All right. We have a motion by Ms. Dobson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Howell. Any other further discussion? All right, all in favor? Five and up. All right. Thank you. All right, that brings us item 14, approve open claim documents. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Mr. Lee. Any discussion? Right. All in favor? Five and up. All right, that should bring us down to construction. So bring us down to the construction update. Oh, there he is. There he is. Hey. I was starting to worry. I hadn't seen you using we saw I was like I was on the corner. All right. send those updates out to you that gives the percentage of a project completed if you know of any concerns that that would be a good so so it's systematic so I I don't get to a board meeting 
did I not update everybody? When I'm sending those updates out and you read, hey, this project's this percent, if there's concern, let me know and that way we can get that communication going. Right. Okay. A little bit of a different process this time. That looks like East Central, is that what you have in there? Yeah. Goodness gracious, these pictures are huge, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Does it get any bigger? Well, that's um, that's looking through the classrooms. I can't see the date. All these pictures are in June. I can't read exactly what date. Six thirty. Okay, so that was June third. So that's looking down through the classroom wings. You can see the block that's stacked up, which will become the demising walls between the classrooms. Um, so the building's starting to take shape. It's uh, basically the full height all the way around the exterior perimeter. All the exterior block work is, is done, so they're working on interior block work now. Brett, Brett, remind me, we, we were kind of using the Van Cleve classrooms as the model for these, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we made just a few changes. Um, Ms. Tanner went to Van Cleve and looked and had just a few small tweaks. Um, the square footage is, uh, I mean, everything is. Mill work changed just a little bit, but uh, it's, it's very, very similar. So there you can see the demising walls between the classroom starting to come up. Mr. Jory, touch that screen up there if you don't mind. Just touch it. Thank you. I'll copy these to the computer next time, Brad. Well, I can get them to you ahead of time. I can change it up, I guess. Did y'all get all this? So Brad, we had uh, we had a big rain event. Yes, sir. So uh, I know we had a lot of conversations, discussions about how we're going to drain that property. How did it do? So to my knowledge, um, I had my guy go out and meet David out there on site the Tuesday morning after the storm. And uh, so there's inlet protection overall with the catch basins, which is just a filter fabric that goes over the catch basins, and it's there to keep the out of the catch basins and the pipes, obviously. And so there was some wash, and so the, the, the protection of the fabric caught all the dirt. And so now you had dirt and you had fabric, which was slowing the water down, getting into the basins. Mm -hmm. um, but they did their job, everything was clean. They caught all the dirt, which tells me that that's where the dirt was going. So it was going to where it's supposed to go. So the water was going where it's supposed to be taking the dirt with it. Um, so, you know. Rob reported back to me that he thought everything looked good considering you know, the tropical storm. They cleaned the inlet protection off, um, and I have not been aware of any issues out there, and that was a pretty good test. So we didn't flood any of the other, the older classrooms, did we, Mr. Tanner? So I think we had a rain gauge. Um, the rain gauge at St. Martin was working, and I think they had like eight and a half inches of rain there. So we assume it was something very similar. East Central. So you get eight and a half inches of rain in a 24 hour, 36 hour window. That's a pretty good test. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So you can just scroll, and if y'all have any questions, um, you can stop me and ask. So where we're at is block works is finishing up on the outside. And, uh, roofing and joist should begin. Here in the next couple weeks. Once we start getting joists on, obviously it gets, it gets good we start getting dry in. That's East Central. So St. Martin's gotten a little ahead of them, a little ahead of East Central now. That building, if you've been by it, it's, it's really taking shape and you can see the size of it. Pretty good size building. So they've got some areas where they've actually got a roof joist on and roof metal is going on in some places. You can see there's some of the roofs are. Picture. 
that's actually for the uh, mezzanine. So that note will be poured with concrete, and that's mezzanine that goes um, in store with mezzanine right there. So that's over the offices. It's all in all, um, move along well. How are we doing as far as the track and, and, and then the main uh, play project? Well, you know, I know on Friday I sent a lot of information out. We're very busy, and, and so I apologize for we have so much going on. I sent a lot of information on Friday, but uh, I, I believe we are ready for recommendation for the track. It, it was a low bid, and there were a few bulk points. Um, to consider, and um, so I believe we'll be ready for recommendation in July for the July 13th. Is that the July 13th board meeting? So, if anybody has any questions, um, you know, I believe the last time it was bid, what? Did it one one point two, one point three million dollars. Yeah, I, I have it right here. You think Central will be able to have a track meet this year? That's, the, that's why we need to keep it moving so we have a track meet next year. Here's some points to consider. The original budget was $900,000. Uh, the only bid a year ago, though, was $1,349,810. Well, so that's important to know. There was one bidder, and that was the bid. And so the lowest base bid among the four bidders, we had four bidders this time, uh, was $1,253,455. There are a couple of alternates for a thicker track surface or we could actually add an extra jump pit uh, if we decided to. Um, but I am recommending that. And so with that said, I will go ahead and say uh, that if we were to move forward, because it is over the budget, the original budget, which was a year ago, by the way, and things do change, uh, but I would want, uh, want the board to know and people listening to know that our remaining construction fund balance would still be $1.7 million. So we still have money in there for any major repairs. I would just not suggest any additional construction at this time. But but yes, we can have a recommendation ready for uh, the July 13th meeting. Do, this, do we have a document that shows a lot of detail on that track? Yeah. So. If you could send me, I know you already have sent it to me, but I want to make sure it's the final one. Sure. So, you, so you even mean the, the drawing, everything, all the detail we have? Yeah, I think the board needs to know details no no problem so Brad if you can send me that uh, information I will forward it to the board it's a big file so we have a link um, unless you yeah no I'm else. assuming a link, link to the website yeah. that we can go to and download it. yeah it's hard. we'll do it how about Bankley the bus bar <coughs> tree clearing where we at on that you know? so the county I think you guys turned that over to the county so we got the permit the permit was issued um, I know Dr. Trick received the certificate of, of saying that the uh, credits were bought, which at that point that kind of it closes the chapter on that book. And so now it's, it's just on the county, and I'm not sure I wasn't involved with getting the county to you know, do the clearing. I saw they did part of it there close from 57 on back. Are, is, are, are, we, are they going to? And I, probably part of that was that wetlands area. Yeah, they were waiting for the wetlands mitigation. If that's all being completed, they just need the, the letter to show that it's been whatever the county needs to show that they're okay to go and clear it. So if you've got that, they just need Joe O'Neill and Randy Bosar just need a copy of it and they'll start clearing. We do. Um, I know Melissa Young, we also got a copy of this that went direct to you from the court. And I thought I'd send it to you. You were going to meet with Mr. Bosar to. Let him know, but we'll make yeah, sure, make sure that's followed up on. If I got it, I didn't know I was getting it. <laughs> it's, it's just Thank a matter of the Corps of Engineers. And it's and, just a certificate. Yeah, it, it's really not very glamorous. Right. Okay. It, you know, it's not some get out of jail free pass that you would expect to show somebody. It's just a letter. And I may have already sent it, honestly. Okay, well, let's just double check it so we can get, yeah. so get that lane cleared and up. Mr. Fibby on, on this. Good. Related to this, there's been, uh, and this will be for the Fabouche to continue, but um, there's been a snag 
in that swap because there's some 16 section issues that we can't we can't do that. So I think it can be worked out, but Melissa can can share with you that the, that we can't just do the kind of thing 16 section land. He so. thought that he could just we could just give him that Blossman parcel. So when I saw him clearing, I reached out and I said, look, before you start tearing stuff down in construction, we don't need to get sideways with our county again. We need to get a lease. Who do I talk to to get a lease going? Um, well, he had, he's been out, so Mr. Knight called him after our meeting on Thursday. And he said that, yeah, that might be kind of a, a, a monkey wrench for them because he thought we could just give him the land. But 16th section of land, you know, the statute says not even a municipality can be given land. They have to pay, enter into a lease. So there may be some changes now, but we're, we're going to, Mr. Bozart said, he'll have to go back to the drawing table, you know, with the Board of Supervisors to see if they'd still be in agreement. Because he thought he could, we could just give him the land. But this is so he can build his fire department, right. community center, or whatever he's. So I asked him not to tear anything down because if they fail, we were utilizing that building in some capacity, you know, and or if we end up leasing it, then someone else might have been interested. So I asked that they don't do anything else until they decide if they're going to enter into a lease. But they did. They did go ahead and clear that property property with the understanding of our original plan, which was the old fire station would become our bus station, and they would get to use this to create their new fire station and police station. So that's why they went ahead and cleared it. But I was not invited not, to that meeting. We had not thought to include Melissa in those discussions about 16 sections. So this is new. I think we thought about it last week when we discovered that, hey, we can't do that. So. Okay. Well, first things first, I guess, let's get, make sure they get the documentation where they can do whatever clearing they need to do for the. But they're releasing the existing fire department right now. And I would assume that lease would go away. I mean, I if think they thought it was going to be a swap. This particular property is on 57, so there's going to be a cost difference because the square frontage on 57 is higher than the land on Fall Hill Road. And there's going to be some overlap. You know, while they're building a new facility and still leasing the old, so they'll be leasing both at the same time. So I guess we just got to get those things ironed out. That's true. And also, a part of that plan that was submitted to the core in order to clear those roads, there's some underground piping that has to go in as part of that curtain. That's right. And so I don't know if that was something the county was going to do. I, I wasn't part of the negotiations or not, but, but it's some somebody will need to, to do this. It's certainly something the county can do. They do it all the time. But whether or not it was in the negotiation or not, I don't know. Um. Mr. Knight about to have a 90 day sabbaticals. So we might need to, you know, make sure that Mr. Bessarge includes Dr. Stricker and myself to give you guys updates because at this point we've kind of been so they may not want to clear that land until all this is the rest of that land until all this is cleared up. All right. All right, let's find out. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Good night. Um that brings us to J yes discuss approve official date for Jackson County School District and resume all operations yeah oh, we got this can, I make the, can I make the motion go ahead that we're open <laughs> is that what you're I doing? make the motion Jackson County School District resumes normal operations beginning July the 1st 2020 right. motion by Mr. Dickerson second second by Ms. Dobson Any well discussion we, we really have already <laughs> prior discussion. to July 1 right what's that yeah so it right. must be prior to July June. I don't know who put that on the agenda. Well, no, the the, or, the must order must came be down and said we have we, to choose a date before July. We opened oh, July. It was June. What about June sixteenth? We opened June. 1. Yes, sir. There we go. I'm making motion. Jackson County School District resumes normal operations on Tuesday, June the sixteenth, twenty twenty. All right. So motion amended. And that's second. <laughs> amended that motion. motion. It's formality. <laughs> Ms. Dobson, any further discussion? No, great job, Dr. Stricker and staff. Yeah, we've excellent. Been, we've been working. Excellent. Thank you. All in favor? Five and all. All right, 
So that brings us to item six, approved selection of architecture, architectural firm. All right, um, do we have a motion? Motion, motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. All right, so discussion, I guess uh, I'm looking at Dr. Stricker. Yeah. And so based on y'all's research, yeah, there was a list. You want me to go ahead? Yeah, who, what it, yeah, we're one, but I guess the board is interested in what is your recommendation? The, the, well, first of all, it was a tough decision from when we originally began looking at firms. Uh, and, and Ryan, thank you for all, and David, all the work you put in on the background work. Um, even narrowing it to three vendors was not easy. And then we saw the three presentations, and, and you witnessed it. It was not. People in our community got to see the discussion, which is a beautiful thing of transparency. Uh, it, it was a, not an easy decision. Uh, you know, in summary, when I when I review the information and the additional information that they submitted, uh, you know, I was breaking it down in terms of um, in reaching my recommendation. Uh, a facility study was a was a leg of it. The actual architectural services, the ability to assist for me, and this was more mine, and I said it uh, last week, the ability to assist with the marketing the demographic study, and then location. Location was a factor. Uh, it didn't weigh as heavily as the, the other three that I just mentioned, but it was a factor. Uh, and so considering uh, recommendations and past experience um, and the presentations of themselves uh, in this order, you are who you, you've been and the work you've done. Uh, and then considering the presentation itself, the follow-up information that they presented to us, uh, I, my recommendation is the same that I mentioned, uh, I believe, Amy, when you asked me uh, last week, and that is, uh, when all conditions, it was a very tough decision, and I did consult with my staff, uh, but when all conditions are very close, uh, same when I interview internal candidates for a position compared to someone from the outside, while I've only been here six months, why wouldn't I go with someone I've worked with that's done a good job? So with that said, I do uh, rec uh, recommend uh, Machado, Patano, I, call, I, I just, I think I said Brad last week, uh, but I do recommend uh, their firm uh, to be our architectural services moving into the bond project. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, any discussion? All right, so I would recommend if you have any, any comments, maybe you thought about it offhand, like after the fact, or if you have any concerns, I would recommend sending that in an email to Dr. Strecker so he can uh, forward that to the group pending the vote. All, right. All in favor? I had two, I had a motion, I had a second. All in favor? Five and up. Uh, and just, just to reiterate, the, the first phase of working with this firm is going to be that uh, facility study. Uh, so I will be sitting down with Brad this week discussing how we're proceeding with that. So I just want to make sure we communicate that so we're on the same page. So, right, so that brings us down to number seven. 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 Okay. Approved uh, Jackson County School District 20, 2021 student handbook. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mm. Motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Second by who? Mr. Dickerson. Any discussion? Yeah, I just want to reiterate that this is the item that was amended prior to the board to say it's pending the um, policy revisions. Mm -hmm. right. I'll, 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 in the minutes, I'll say to approve the student handbook with edits from email 615.20, and then I'll make sure I put those edits into the minutes. Perfect. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. All right, thanks, Thank Brad. You. All right, all in favor? Five and up. All right, so the next thing, does that bring us to 11? I didn't hear who made the motion. Who made the motion? I made the motion, one made the second. So next, I think, is item 11. Approve uh, bank cleavage. That was that consent. consent. We found consent. 
Okay, yes. that's fine. We'll go to the Coke and Bank. Coke and Bank, please. <laughs> Long <laughs> side of folks. How did that ever, how how did that ever happen? Long story. <laughs> I'll be interested someday over a Coca Cola. <laughs> I mean, they were the last holdout. Yeah. I'd like to hear the All story. deals with money, right? All deals with money. Right. Coke returns the bank. I think there's a lot of happy folks out there. All right. Um, all right, so that brings us to item 23 approve new job descriptions for payroll agent and purchasing agent. Do I have a motion? Motion by Mr. Howell. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. Any discussion? I I had asked for some clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For um, I, I perceive that this position is going to be the position that gets the board where we need to be with state auditors. Yes. I thought it appropriate that we put specifically that language in the policy. We will add that. So, can I amend the motion to adopt the language in what I sent you in last week? All right, so I have a motion to amend the, the purchasing agent job description. Okay, motion to amend. I have a second. Second by Mr. Howe. All right, all in favor? 5 and 0. Now going back to the original motion to approve. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Five and okay. okay. All right. Next is uh, item 25. Approve new job description for band tech assistant. Do I have a motion? Mr. Motion. I have that on consent. I, I yes. put that on consent. Is that appropriate? Oh, was that on consent? Yes, it was. Yes, okay. All right. I forgot. I didn't, I didn't mark it out. 26. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So that's band. That's our both of our band techs at that the school district store, right? So Good thing for our band 27. program. 27. Around 27. All right. Item 27. Approved policy revision. The policy GGBA. Salary, salary scale administrator. Motion. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. Any discussion? All, right, all in favor? Five and up. All right, item 28. Present approved new policy GGA, Assistant Superintendent Salary Scale. Motion. Motion, motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Second by Mr. Howell. Any discussion? All in favor? Five and up. All right, and that takes us to 16th section land, item 29. Uh, 29C. Approve, is it Georgian? Georgian, is that what it is? I think Georgian. Georgian um, requests to approve it and to enter into a non disturbance and recognition agreement with Family Dollar. Do you want me to explain? Yes, I please. Do. I said <laughs> it three times. I haven't said it. Have this already. has something to do with the. It's the Fred's building. The Fred's building, yeah. And Dollar General is looking to move in. Family but, Dollar? Dollar family, family dollar. dollar. Family dollar? Family, family dollar. dollar. They're looking to move in, but they only want part of the building. Well, they don't want the current lessee to forfeit the lease, and then here they've moved in and they're kicked out. So they've asked that we enter into this non disturbance, which means if the lessee did default on the lease, that we would still allow them to remain on the property and I guess we would offer them the lease themselves or Jack said that there's a bank you know probably a bank involved because of the, the size of the building there's probably a, a, a lender involved as well he has spoken with Bill Cheney who is our attorney at the Secretary of State level that manages 16 section he said these are all over the state it's very common so the board would just we're asking the board to agree to allow us because Family Dollar refuses to move in unless we at least give them some assurances through this manner 
that says if this lessee walks, they're protected. Let me let me repeat back to you what I think you just said. Okay. So original lease was with whoever the parent was of uh, Fritz. And they still hold it? Jones Brothers built it, and he was also the lessee. He was the developer and the okay. lessee. Fred's just rented from him. So Jones still has the lease? Jones. He's still paying us? This board allowed them to assign it to Gorjon, so he is now the lessee. It's called Gorjon Van Cleve, Inc., I think, or LLC. So he has the lease. He's going to allow Family Dollar to move into a portion of it, and he's going to try to get someone to also lease the other side. Right. And so this is just an assurance for Family Dollar that if we move from our current location, we're not going to move into your building and then lose our spot if you decide to get rid of this 16-section lease. So this is just an assurance for Family Dollar. We really are not in their reach at all. All the discussions, all the business will take place with the lessee unless he defaults. Then they have a right basically to have discussions with us through this non disturbance that we're not going to boot them out. This is all legal. Like you said, it's all been checked out. No. All right, so uh, one, I, I have another question. So underneath it, it says non disturbance for Dollar General. Isn't it, shouldn't that be family it's, dollar? It's just the name of, I, it was a Freudian slip. That's just the attachment, what I call the attachment. The agenda item says family dollar, and that is exactly what we're going to minutes, despite what I named the document. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's a Melissa glitch on what I named it. Okay. All right, so we need a motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Dickerson, second, second by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Five and up. That's right, so item D, approve amendment of lease following eight-year reappraisal. Ferguson. Motion? Motion. Motion by Ms. Dobson. Second by Mr. Howell. What is this, Melissa? Just their eight-year, every eight years, the state requires we reappraise. We had a reappraisal, no change in rent, but I have to amend the agenda, I mean the lease, to say that it was reappraised. Okay. Okay. All right, all in favor? All right, and item 30, which we added, which was not a consent. This is for the emergency certs. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Howell. Any discussion? All in favor? Five and up. All right, that takes us to item N, approve license educator recommendations. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Mr. Lee. Any discussion? All in favor? Hang on. Five and up. Um, right. Did you mean to get L? You wasn't under consent? No, it wasn't under consent? No, no. it was the K and then oh, O. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I think you're going to. All right, we'll go back to L. Yeah. I was listening to Mr. Dickerson. Oh, oh, so L's, L's, L's. <laughs> I to me. <laughs> There's a lot of time invested. Oh, oh I understand. Yeah, you're There's right. a lot of time invested we in L, it, and I've already talked about reason. L. That's right. We left it off for a reason. All right, so item L. All right, because it would motion. be the last item. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lee. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh. Do we have any, these two gentlemen, are they here with us yeah. tonight? One, one of them, uh, Todd Boucher, is here, uh, which will be for the assistant superintendent for Van Cleve. And uh, David Bagot did not make it. Uh, again, both these gentlemen, their character uh, is, is unmatched from reference checking I've done. And Mr. Bagot is working hard at his current position. He had some discipline hearings this evening, and I respected yeah. that. Uh, he certainly wanted to be here. Uh, Mr. Boucher is here and uh, came, high, came very highly recommended. Uh, where he's leaving, they will miss him, uh, and we're very blessed to have him. And so I uh, thank you for being here. Welcome. Evening. Say, say a few words. I don't. I know that I have super big shoes to fill. That's all I know because I've heard a lot about Mr. Knight. You know, part of the reason I think that he hired me is so he didn't have to worry about learning a new name. Todd. My name's Todd also. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, though, I'm I'm excited about this opportunity. I've been in the same district for 19 years, so 
definitely looking forward to a change. But and you live here? Lived in Van Cleef since Katrina, so it, it would be nice not to have to make that long trek every day. So, but thank you. Well, yes. so to make it official, all in favor? Five and up. Well, now welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That was key. <laughs> All right, so that takes us to consent. consent. All right, so I have approved uh, motion to approve consent agenda. I have consent. Motion. Motion by Ms. Dobson. Second. Second by Mr. Howell. All in favor? Five and zero. Oh. Um, do I have a motion to enter into executive session? Motion. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Five and zero. Oh. All right. Thanks everybody for attending. Good night. Thirty nine. Thank <laughs> you.